Yeah, I just. Um, yes. How's the performance? Boot camp isn't bad, you just have to reboot. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I didn't have an issue with that. Um, uh, I, I, if anything, I had performance problems when I used like virtualization, like when I used like That's parallels or, oh, I can't remember the, na the other name of the other one I'm that I used. Getting a Mac, so. Yeah, so. I was doing it from it. Yeah, like, I, was I, would, I would get a service. If I was the buying right now and I had $2,000 to spend, I'd buy a service. Um, excuse me? <laughs> Oh, that's all right. Um, if you looked on lab six, your next lab, we're going to do a lab that's going to take a few weeks to do. And we're going to do it a bit at a time. All right. And I want to do this more as a workshop sort of environment as opposed to a lecture and then you go off on your own and do this stuff. So there will be opportunity for us to discuss it in class both with me and with the other folks in the class. So this will be a two or three week project, maybe a four week project. I've sketched out in my mind. Pardon me? It's better than saying it's due next week, though, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> right, you know. So I, I was going to say that. That's the good news in my mind, to <laughs> say you got four weeks to do it instead of like it's due next week or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're gonna write a, a simple blackjack game, all right? And we're going to do it in pieces. Um, here's how I'm visioning it. The first piece is the design. What's due for lab six, there's no code due for lab six at all, just the design. And I'll talk about what that means. All right, and this will be an opportunity for you to sort of catch up on your other assignments and all that. All right, so first week is do a design. I'm then going to set milestones to have so much done by the following week, then have a completed version the third week, and then a fourth week will probably be refactoring. That's sort of how I plan on doing it, and that's subject to change, of course, but it, it's to do that. Um, so the Dito applications get old after a while, all right? And I've also heard that they're literally old because if you download the newer, app, uh, newer versions of them, they do things in a little bit different way. Which doesn't surprise me because, again, Things change. There's a million ways to do almost anything. So I will upload the old Dito applications that I've been using um, um, sometime over the next couple days or so. So look out on Canvas for that. But what I want to do today is I want to talk about a blackjack game and sort of get you started in the right direction for design. All right. Now, design is a word that can almost mean anything, right? It can mean so many different things. Like, what does it mean to design? All right? There, there's, and the, the funny thing is, is it means all of them. All right? You just have to be aware of the context it's in and be aware of the particular project you're working on, what's important in a design. All right? Uh, a design can mean user interface design. In other words, what it's going to look like. And that's true whether it be... Um, a web page or, or whatever, the, the UI, how the user is going to interact with it. You design that. So that is part of this. You're going to design the UI, and we'll talk about what's going to be contained in the UI. The other thing the design is, is a plan. All right? a, uh, you, could, you could call it uh, synonymous with a design for uh, an application would be a plan for that application. How you plan on addressing this. All right. Now, we already know that good programming is about breaking things up into chunks. It's breaking things up into components. All right. So we're not going to have one gigantic class that has everything for our blackjack game in it. Right. We're going to break it down into classes, and each of those classes is going to have its job to do, and we'll do the job, and then. They need to be, their, their activities need to co be coordinated. 
All right. So that's what we'll do. Uh, we'll spend some time talking on is both the design of the UI and the design of the classes that are going to be involved. All right. Is everyone familiar with the game Blackjack? Iffy. All right. Let me go over the rules. Pardon me. Yeah, get to 21 is, is, is pretty much it. The rules are as follow. Brand new deck of cards. Went to Giant Eagle today and got it. All right. The rules of Blackjack are as follows. And we're going to assume in this case that, they're, that, that you are playing against the computer. All right. And the computer is the dealer. So the dealer deals the cards, and there's also special rules about how a dealer plays. Dealer doesn't, uh, a, 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 a player can play however they want to, but a dealer has to follow rules, which makes it really nice in a programming set because, you know, we can write rules in our programs. So here's how blackjack works, and for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put all of the cards face up. All right. Normally, you would deal two face down to the player and the dealer shows one of their cards. So normally you would go like this. One to the player, one to the dealer, second to the player, and then you would show, the dealer would show one of their cards. Okay? But that's going to be a little tricky, so well, I'm going to show all of them. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So the idea is to get as close to 19 as you can without going over. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah I, was, I was looking at the 10 and the 9, but I was thinking, yes, the object is to get to, as close to 21 as possible without going over. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and if you look at this, you get two cards to start out, and two cards, their values are, there's two through ten, they're worth two through ten. All right? Jack, king, and queen are worth ten. All right? Aces are either work, worth one or eleven, depending on how it works for you. So, in this case, the player has nineteen. Now, the player can choose whether to take additional cards or not. That's called a hit. Now, in this case, they probably wouldn't take a hit because they, they would need a two or an ace would be the only thing that wouldn't put them over. So if they were to take a hit, two. Oh, wow. right. Well, it's a brand new deck, so oh, wow. yeah, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. So let's try that again. Player takes a hit. It, they're over because they're over 21. Because they have a 5, a 9, and a 10. That adds up to 24. So they lose. So the player can take as many cards as they want, trying to get as close to 21 as possible without going over. All right. The dealer has to follow by a certain set of rules. If the dealer has 17 or higher, they have to stay. They can't take any more hits. If they have less than 17, they have to take hits. Well, in this case, even if I didn't take the hit, the dealer would have won because the dealer's right at 21. Let's play another game with this. Now, of course, the dealer wouldn't know what the player had, right? And the player would only know one of the cards that the dealer had. The player shows one card? Well, the player shows both their cards. Because it doesn't matter. Oh, right, right, right. In the game. Right. I'm talking about if you're doing this for real. If you're, doing... if you're doing it for real, you would show the player okay. all the cards. Okay. All right. Well, the dealer would have one base number. Right. Okay. So. So. Dealer has 17, but the, the player doesn't know that. So they have 8. Would you take a hit? Yeah, that's far away from 21. In fact, you couldn't go over with this card, right? Because even if this card was an ace, that would just take you up to 19. All right? And if it was a 10, so you, yeah, you would take a hit here. 
So it's six. So I got 14. Do I take it? Do I take a hit? Seven. Twenty-one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna stand. All right, I'm gonna stay. Dealer has 17, so the player wins. So the player won this round. All right. Let's do one more hand. Hopefully we will. We'll go on then to talk about the GUI. All right, so. Player has 17. What do you do? Take a hit or stay? Stay. So the, uh, the dealer has 13. Take a hit. 18. And the dealer wins. Okay. So if you're fuzzy on the rules, we can talk about it. All right. But I just want to make sure that right now we have the mechanics of this down. All right. We're going to do this in two pieces. We are going to um, first talk about the UI and what would be contained in the UI. And again, we're not going to worry about like adorning the UI. We're going to just talk about the, the bare essentials for the UI. And you can adorn it however you want to. You can have trumpets playing if they win and, and sad trombone if they lose or whatever. All right. But I want to talk about the basics of the UI. What would the UI for this look like? Describe what it would look like. Okay. A stay and hit button. All right. What else would it have? New game or deal or whatever you want to call it. All right. Are we talking about betting now? We won't talk about betting now. All right. Um, and you're going to have you're going to have picture boxes. Okay. Uh, but probably one in place of making 52 of them. Okay. I would put like a a dealer section of it. I would put like a container basically to hold the the cards in place. All right, for the dealer and one for the player. So my main XML is going to look like this. And we'll talk about what these are in a second. We'll, we'll talk about how you could do this. Again, your mileage may vary. There's, there's a bunch of ways you could do this, right? So I don't, I don't uh, mean to imply that this is the correct way. But I do want to sort of translate and say, well, what would be one way to do this? Now, you mentioned inflating. What would our other XML consist of? Uh, you could do just a single container. All right. That will be basically the card. We will have a new card that will consist of an image. All right. Now, you're going to need um, 52 images for this to work. However, I'll give those to you. All right, I'll give you uh, a deck of, of 52 separate images. And, and we'll talk about that in, in a minute. But um, as we go through this, how do I want to put this? As we go through this, I may pull up one of Deedle's examples to show you how to do something specific to this. Like, for example, there's a flag game where you guess the flag that is hard. Because there's a lot of countries I have no idea what their flag looks like. All right, U.S. and Canada I got down, right? But everyone else is iffy. All right, but that does a similar thing here, where they have so many flag images and they simply change which ones are being displayed. So, UI-wise, we are going to have two XML files, more than likely, a new card XML that will consist of a single image view. All right. And this will get inflated and added to the player and the dealer sections. All right? So this one's easy. Single image view in this guy. What's our main XML going to contain? And again, you could do this a few different ways. 
Let me tell you the way I would do it. And then again, you can experiment and play with it and so on. I would make this a linear layout. All right. If we look at this, if we look at the three main areas, they just stack up one on top of the other. One, two, three. All right. Now, this eventually is going to have several cards in it, and this eventually will have several cards in it. But if we look in terms of um, fundamental blocks, each of these is its own block. So I would make a linear layout, and I would have it oriented vertically. All right. How do you suppose I would do each of these three sections? Okay, you, you could do a line segment to separate them. I guess what I'm saying is if I did this purely as a linear layout, then we're going to have things stacked this way. Card, 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 button, 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 card, card, card. And we probably don't want to do that. The way I have this sketched here, I want the cards to go this way, I want the buttons to go that way, and I want that to go that way. I heard something. Table layouts, you could get it to work. You could have a, row, a table with three rows in it, all right, and just add to that. So one alternative would be not to use a linear layout, but use a table layout. And then you'd have three table rows. With their appropriate attributes and IDs and all that. And this would be for the player's cards. This would be for the buttons. So this would have the buttons in it. And then these table rows is where you, is where you would inflate the cards and put them in there. All right? Another way to do it, so you can do it with the table and, and, and table cells and all that, and that would work. You could also do it with linear layouts. So... I can put linear layouts inside of linear layouts. So I could make each one of these three main sections itself a linear layout that's oriented horizontally. Which is the right way to do it? I don't think this matters. You do which way makes sense to you, seems easier. Perhaps my background in HTML has made me not like tables so much. So I tend to steer clear from tables, but you certainly could do it with tables. All right, no, no big deal. All right. Could you come up with something other than what we defined? Absolutely. All right. You could use relative layouts and you could use, you know, any of the layouts we looked at, you could probably figure out a way to make it work. That probably wouldn't be that much harder than any of the other ways that we have. The point is, is when the day is done, you need to have a section that you're going to put the player cards in, a section that you're going to put the dealer cards in, and a section in which the buttons are going to appear. All right. And then you're going to have a 
another XML file is going to contain the image that's going to map to the particular image of the card. And you're going to add that to either the player area or the dealer area every time a card is dealt. So this could be a linear layout, linear layout, linear layout inside a vertical linear layout. This could be table row, table row, table row within a table. Your choice as far as that goes. Now, we have to figure out three things that we need to do. All right? That is, what happens when we hit the new button, what happens when we hit the hit button, and what happens when we hit the stay button. Those are three things that we can, we, we're going to write code for. All right? And we can talk about those um, and sort of give an overview to that, and then we can talk about the actual classes that we're going to have. So we're going to need button listeners for each of these three things. All right, we're going to need a hit button listener, a stay button listener, and a new button listener. Now, we may disable some of these buttons at certain points in time, right? For example, if you're in the middle of playing a game, maybe stay and hit is enabled, but new isn't. And after you finish a game, then maybe um, new is enabled and stay and hit aren't. All right? There probably also should be, the one thing I forgot is some sort of text box to indicate whether you won or lost. Okay? So, stay. What's that going to do when I click stay? Okay. Stay will start the dealer playing their hand. Pardon me? Well, we're not talking about classes yet. We're just talking about sort of conceptually. Stay, the dealer plays. And what's the dealer's play? What's the dealer's rules for playing? Hit on 17, or I'm sorry, hit on lower than 17, stay on 17 and higher. So that is the, the rule. So the dealer will take a card, or the, user will check to see, or the dealer will check to see what its value is. Uh, what the value of his hand is. If it's 17, it's done, and then the game can be evaluated, right? The game can be evaluated, and you look to see who's closer to 21. All right. Now, the if they hit, if they're less than 16, they'll take a hit and then evaluate, and they'll do that until they are 17 or greater, or they've gone over. All right. The game, the game can end one of three ways. All right? And again, there, there's a number of different twists and permutations of blackjack. We're just doing very straightforward one hand. Simple. All right? The player can bust. That is, the player gets over 21. The dealer can bust. That is, the dealer gets over 21. Or both players are under 21. Everyone has stopped taking hits and you evaluate to see who's closer than 21. Those are so your three terminal scenarios. Um, pardon me? Depends, depends on the rules. We can say, the way I've typically played it is the dealer wins. But we, we can make that assumption. Again, you know, uh, yeah, house rules, exactly. Hey, that, that's great. Yeah, I can say that for everything. No, uh, if you get to the point where you can split them, you've probably done well enough on the project to turn it in. Yeah. All right? <laughs> Just stop there and yeah. Um, yeah, and there's all kinds of other like side rules and all that, but we're just going to talk about just playing a single hand. All right. So, a hit does what? Well, a hit goes in and adds a card to the player and checks to see if they busted or not. They busted then they're done. Game's over and they've lost. If not, they have to decide if they want another hit. And over and over and over and over, and over again until they hit stay. When they hit stay, they can no longer take a hit. 
So UI-wise, that button would become disabled when the user hits stay. All right? And then the dealer's kicked in. New would sort of clean the slate, give each player two cards. It would show both of them for the player and show one of them for the dealer. All right? Well, let's get to that. We, we, we somehow have to evaluate what the value of a hand is. All right? And the value of a hand is determined, as I said, to write it out, two through tens are worth the value of the card. Jacks, kings, and queens are worth 10. An ace is worth either 11 or 1. So, let's talk about what classes we're going to need now. Because yes, we need a, we need a way of figuring out the value for each card. Now, in determining the classes, this is one of my themes. If you had me for several classes, you, pardon the pun, if you had me for several courses, you'll hear me say this all the time. That really, in object-oriented programming and design, you're modeling some real-world activity. So, how do you design what classes you need? Well, you look at that real-world activity and you see what's going on in it. All right? So, let's say I'll play the role of the computer. Who wants to play the role of the person? All right? Okay. So I'll put the cards up here. Your cards I'll put here. Mine I'll put there. Okay. So we click the new button. All right. We click the new button. I have a deck of cards. Nothing up my sleeves. All right. I have a deck of cards. I give one card to the player, one card to me, second card to the player, a second card to me. All right. As I'm saying this, this is almost like what I say in database design. Count the nouns. All right. We have a so how many nouns have we heard too far so far? We've had we have a dealer, we have a player, we have cards, we have a deck, and we have a hand. All right. Okay. So that's how, that's what happens when you press the new button. The cards get dealt out in that manner, and now. The hit and the stay buttons are available. Which one are you going to press? So he presses the hit button. What does that do? That gives him another card. Boom, he's busted. Game's over. He loses. Exactly. All right. So let's play another hand. <laughs> yeah, right, right. All right, so, so the game was over, you lost, we hit the new button to play another hand, hit or stay. All right, so now, yeah, he has 20, yeah, he maybe has 26, all right, we don't want that one. He either has 16, so 11, 4, and 1, all right, that would be 16, or Six, one, four, and one. Do you want to hit or stay? Eight. So now you have either fourteen or bust. All right. So you're going to take the fourteen. So what do you want? Yeah, twenty. What are you going to do? So it's the stay button. Right. So. He stays, so he presses the stay button. What does that do? That disables the hit button. So he can't like have a second thought and say, oh, wait a minute, you know, let me do that. So, that's true. That's true. Because really what's going to happen is instantly the dealer's going to play their hand because the dealer's not going to deliberate. All right? So what happens now? The dealer's algorithm kicks in and says, I have a seven. I need to take a hit. I have... An 11. 
Uh-oh, going to take a hit. Ooh, I have a 15, I'm going to take a hit. I have an 18, I will stay, and Jesse wins. At this point, the new button is enabled, and the message comes saying that he wins. All right, so that is demonstration of a few hands and, and a description of like what's going to go on UI-wise with this. Now, sometimes they're called, sometimes people say actors, you know, but that can be confusing because people think of like, you know, like, like Harrison Ford or something. Not, not that kind of actor, but who are, what entities are playing a role in this game? What are the nouns? What things do we have? Because remember, a class is a sort of a template for the things, the entities that live in our application. So what entities do we have? We have a player. What else do we have? We have, even though it was not visible, and this is why you kind of have to use, uh, you know, you, you kind of have to think through um, this a bit. We have actually the rules of blackjack. All right? That needs to live somewhere. We're playing blackjack and not playing poker or not playing rummy or gin or anything like that. All right? Now, again, we could write this in such a way that we could make a generic card game and let the user pick. I want to play rummy, I want to play gin, I want to play poker, whatever, and have it work. But there is the blackjack game rules. That is an entity, so to speak. Of. Not necessarily a physical one, but it is an entity. What else do we have? We have a deck. What else do we have? We have a dealer. Well, let's identify everything first, and then we can talk about them more. All right? What else do we have? We have a card. Does the what need its own class? Well, again, I go back to real world. All right? There's actually a card in a real world game of blackjack. All right? Now, remember, when you talk about classes, you talk about entities and behaviors. All right? So, or, or attributes, I'm sorry, and behaviors. What are the attributes that you might have on a card class? The value of the card? And suit? What is a deck really? Pardon me? A deck is a group of cards. So what is a, a deck comprised of? It's comprised of a collection of cards. And I would suggest an array list. All right? Why do I suggest an array list? Because are there always 52 cards in this deck? No. What happens when I deal? I start out like this. There's 51 cards now. 50 cards, 49, 48. And as I take hits or whatever, I decrease that by one. So the advantage of an array list over an array is with an array list, it can be a dynamic number of cards. All right? So let's say we have an array list of our deck. An array list of cards in our deck. And that is going to start out being initialized by 52 cards. So the, the deck class itself is going to have an array list of cards. Each of those cards we can ask the value in the suit. And we might even be able to ask, what's the name of your image? What image should you use? 
All right? Because that will be useful. We need to know what image to pop into this guy as we add it. And we need to know the value in suit of the card to do calculations and other stuff like that. What are some methods that we could do on a deck? Well, I would say, what, what, what did you see me do, literally? Methods that you could do is you could shuffle a deck. Now, before I would go and write a algorithm to shuffle a deck, all right, I would look in the ArrayList class, class to see if there's already a shuffle method. And as it turns out, guess what? There is. Part of the challenge of programming is, is, is you're using Java to write this. There's all kinds of classes built into Java. And they have behaviors built in already. So a familiarity with those objects is very useful. So ArrayList, and again, this being a class, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to guide you in the right direction. An ArrayList in Java And we can slide down here and Yeah, just. There's so much that has to do with it. Right. <coughs> All right. There is a method that we can use to shuffle that. Collection, shuffle. And we can put in our array list in there. Now, the reason why this isn't. The reason why I didn't see it is remember that in object-oriented programming, there are classes that inherit from other classes and inherit from other classes, so it doesn't necessarily show you all the methods that are available. But the good news is, is that we can shuffle easily an array list. This is going to show the collection shuffle somewhere down here. Eventually, yeah. Or not. Or I passed it. At any rate, there is a, there is a method to do that. Keep in mind, my role in here, I want this to be a workshop. Bring the questions and problems that you run into to class. If you don't know how to shuffle a deck of cards code-wise, let me know. All right? Now... Let's talk about the cards and the deck a little bit more. All right? What's another method that exists on a deck? Remove card or, or deal. Deal from the deck. What does deal do? Well, what does a deal method do? Not, not what's the whole dealing process. What does the deal method on the deck do? It takes a card and gives it to someone. 
From the deck's perspective, that's dealing. Now, I may take that card, the first card may go to the player, second card goes to the dealer, third card goes to the player, fourth card goes to the dealer. But, in terms of thinking in terms of object-oriented design, dealing is simply taking a card off the deck. It's no longer in the deck anymore, right? That, pardon me? It shortens the array list and I give the card to something else. So, let's, let's start writing a shell of the class. And let's not worry about, let's, let's focus on the card and the deck class now. Okay. All right. Card class has attributes. And we could do a couple of different things with them. We'll make an integer for the suit. Sure. Make an integer for the suit. And we could do something like 1 equals hearts, 2 equals spades, 3 equals clubs. 4 equals diamonds. For the value of the card, so whether it's an ace or a seven or whatever, how would we represent that? Could do it with another int or we could do it with a string, right? Because ace, king, queen, whatever, but I'm going to do it for an int. I'm going to do another int, and I'm going to call this the value of the card. And one's going to be a two. <laughs> or really, we could, we could do this. Two could be a two, all the way through ten being a ten. Eleven could be a jack. 12 could be a queen, 13 could be a king, and 14 could be an ace. Couldn't what? No, they couldn't for a couple reasons. Pardon me? This, yeah, a king and a queen and a jack may have the same value within blackjack, but we want to make sure we display the right card, right? We don't want two jack of diamonds out there, right? So if we showed them with the same thing, we could run into that problem. Second thing is, is remember, think of the bigger picture, all right? A jack, a king, and a queen may be equivalent in blackjack, are they equivalent in every single card game? No. So we're defining what's an attribute of the card and not what is uh, uh, part of the rules of blackjack. So for example, giving me the value of the card, like what does it count for, how many points does it count for, that's not the card's job, believe it or not. That's the blackjack rules job. All right. So, what methods are we going to have here? All right. We're going to have set suit. It's going to take an argument and set the value of the integer. Set value. It's going to take an int and set the value. We're going to have a get suit get value, and maybe get image name. Well, let's talk about constructors for a second. All right. Not all of you have had a Java class, so you might not be familiar with what a constructor is. A constructor is a special method that runs when we create a new object. All right. If you think about it, Every card has to have a suit and a value. So I shouldn't be able to create a card without assigning it a value 
and a suit. So what I can do is I can define a constructor that allows me to create the card and as I create it, set the suit and the, the card for it. So, get image name, sure. Yep. So, I could, if you're familiar with constructors, I could add a constructor here for card that accepted two arguments, one for suit and one for value. I'll tell you what though, you don't have to use a constructor. So if you're confused about that, if you get it to work and you don't have a constructor, it'll take me two minutes to show you how to add a constructor to it. So don't worry about that right off. All right, that, that's not uh, an essential. So yeah, you can use constructors if you want to, but it's not a requirement. All right. We do need a constructor for the deck, though, which I'm going to talk about in a second. All right. A deck. We already said it has an array list of cards which other thing this one cards? yeah Well, because you have to initialize a card. In other words, if I create a new card object, well, what card is that? I have to initialize those values for that particular card. So in other words, when I, and we'll see in a second here, when I create the card, let's imagine I had 52 blank sheets of, of cardboard here, and I wanted to make my own deck. What would I do? I would take the first card, turn it over, and I would draw an ace of hearts to it. All right? So I would assign that particular card a suit and a value. Second one, king of hearts. So I need to be able to initialize that. Really, if you have the constructor, you probably don't need the sets because you're not going to change a card from uh, ace of clubs to uh, ten of diamonds or something like that. But you need some way to initialize it. So either you use a constructor or you use the set methods to initialize it. All right. So, correct. There's always, there's always some sort of constructor, but if you don't declare a constructor, it, there's one created for you. All right. A deck contains an array list of cards. All right, so I'll create a new array list. Now, um, let me write it neater. I'm just defining my new array list. Now, constructor is what makes an object. If I were making a deck of cards, all right, how would I do it? Well, I would have to, for each suit, I'd have to make the two, then the three, then the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, king, queen, ace. All right? So, 
And I'd repeat that for all four suits. Now, let's look at the card. The card we set as a suit that goes from 1 through 4. And as a value that goes from 2 to 14. All right? What does that sound like coding-wise to you? Two loops. All right, we're going to loop through. Again, if you think about if you were drawing these cards by hand, if you're creating it, you'd grab a blank card, all right, you'd get a blank card, you would start with the first suit. Now, you could do it in some random crazy order, but you'd then like, did I make the three of diamonds yet or not? So you probably would be better off doing it in an orderly way. Let's say I'm going to start with, with hearts. Two of hearts, three of hearts, four of hearts, five of hearts, and so on. Then when I was done with hearts, do spades, two of spades, three of spades, four of spades, and so on. So, my constructor on the deck is going to have two loops. For i equals 1, i less than 5, i plus plus, for j equals 2, j less than 14, J plus plus. Repeat that, please. It what? Yeah, it, it wouldn't work. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it wouldn't work, but it wouldn't work. I'd have to sit through and and parse that. Yeah. Unfortunately, I picked uh, J, which looks like a semicolon, <laughs> especially with my bad writing. Then what are we going to do? We're going to create a card. How do I create a new card? Card C equals new card. Yeah. Then I'm going to say card set suit i card whoops card set value j and then finally i'm going to say array list cards add that card so let's look a step at a time what I'm doing here. Remember, my suits go from 1 through 4. The value of the cards goes from 2 through 14. So I have two loops. One loop starts at 1, goes until as long as i is less than 5. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. The second loop starts at 2 and goes as long as it's less than 15. So it goes 2 through 14. I create a new card. I set the suit and set the value for that card based on the counter. And then when I'm done, I add that card to the deck. All right. So how many cards am I going to end up with? All right. You know that better be the answer, right? Because there's 52 de uh, cards in a deck. Well, let's, let's do the math. There are four suits, and there are two, three, four, two through 14. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there's 13 cards in a suit. Four times 13 is 52. So we're doing it correct. All right? So. That's how you would create a deck. All a deck is, is a collection of cards. 
Each card simply has a couple of attributes. The suit, the value, and we threw in the image there to make it easier to find the image. When we make a deck, what do we want to do? We want to make one of each suit each value. So we have an outer loop that controls and loops through the four suits. We have an inner loop that loops through the 13 values. At each step through, we create a card object, we set its values, and we um, add it to the array list. Okay? Questions about this? Yes? This four line? Yeah. For J equals two semicolon J less than 15 semicolon J plus plus. Functionally, you would do the same thing. So I could say J less than or equal to 14, J less than 15. Since we're incrementing by one, those two are equivalent. So if it's clear, my gauge, my gauge is always like if it's clear to you, you know. So yeah, if that's clear to you, then, then absolutely. Just like this could be I less than or equal to four. And that would work just the same. Now remember, all right, and a class is meant to represent a template of some entity. All the attributes and all the behaviors of that entity. So a card is what? A card simply has a couple of attributes, value in a suit, and has a picture of it. A deck is simply a collection of cards. All right? An object, remember, is when we make specific values. So I could talk about a card and say a card has a suit and a value and so on, but the specific cards are objects. They're all members of this class. They all have a suit and a value associated with them. I talk in abstract terms about a deck as having an array list of cards, but really a deck, when I create a deck object, what am I doing? I want to create a collection of 52 cards. Yes? So when you go to use cards, yes. Repeat that, please. Oh, this? Yeah. This is an array list. So, which is a collection? Yes. So you get both the methods for array list and, uh, and collection? Correct. Right. You get on that card. Pardon me? Nothing special you have to do? No. That's the whole notion of inheritance. All right. An array list is an example of a collection. So whatever you can do to a collection, you can do an array list. And as such, you can do that to cards. So, what I would like you to do is think about this for next time, all right? And think about, start thinking about the design. What I'd like you to do for the last couple of minutes is either talk among yourselves to try to figure out what's, what are some other methods that we would have and how they would work. What I want to do in class is I want to go back and I want to do this literally a piece at a time. I want to create the class for the cards and the class for the deck. And I just want to go and just 
give me a card, 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 and just display it on the screen. That will be our goal for next time, all right, is I'll work on developing that app. You're welcome to do that as well. I will in the meantime have the collection of cards for you, but we'll see this. Now, this seems like a lot. You know, when I first did this assignment, I think two or three semesters back, like the students were like, oh my God. But that's why we're taking it slow, and that's why we're doing it a piece at a time. All right? So the first piece I want you to think about and talk with the other folks in class and think about it, how you're going to, what other methods you're going to need both on the deck class, I don't think you really need anything more on the card class, but you're probably going to need some on the deck class, besides a constructor. And then think of what the other objects are going to be and what methods you need on those. All right? So for the rest of class today, you're welcome to either ask me questions or talk among yourselves about that. Put your heads together. We'll pick up on this next time, and I'll write just a very basic code that will create a app that will simply deal a deck of cards. All right? Yes? Would deal be better in the deck or better in the dealer? It could be in the deck as a, or better as its own class. It could be in the deck as a method, right? That returns a card object and removes it from the deck? Yes. To, to answer your question, the question of where would a deal method go? Could it be its own class or could it be a... Well, what what would what would the attributes be of a deal? Remember, when you talk about a class, you're talking about an entity that has attributes and methods. That to me sounds like a method. All right. Now you definitely deal a deck of cards, right? Because I mean, here I am dealing a deck of cards. All right. Now whether the fact that the dealer has a deal method as well that's a possibility as well, right? And the deal method might deal from the deck of cards, all right? So you could do it that way. You could call a method on a dealer that says deal a card, and what all the dealer of the card does is call the method on the deck of the cards to say go deal a card, all right? You, you, do that, you, do that, you do that a lot. That's called delegation. That's where one class uses the method of another class to do the job. In other words, a dealer deals, but a dealer really deals from a deck of cards. So a dealer dealing is simply calling the deal function on the deck. All right? And I'm trying to think of what else. Well, we could probably do the math on this. Um, we could assume that by five cards, people are going to probably either stay or bust. Okay? I guess if you were really lucky and you got four aces, four twos, that would put you up to what? Twelve? And then three threes. So... 11 cards would be the absolute physical maximum that you would get. I don't think we have to worry about that. We definitely don't have to worry about that now. All right, that's something that we can add on later. Again, the whole idea of writing code that moves you closer to your goal and not necessarily trying to hit the whole goal at once. That's something, that's a perfect thing to think of like, you know, how would I handle that? You know, because you want your program to be fault tolerant and robust. Maybe you make those things scrollable. So if you get more than a certain number of cards, you can scroll it back and forth and see them. You know, that would be one way of handling it. All right. Other questions? All right. Rest of class, if you want to discuss it with me or with other folks in class, do that. Next time we will create an app to deal a deck of cards. Go over and easier to follow the template example? Or go back over the deal example with it? I can do that either today or I can do that um, in class um, um, yeah, um, Thursday, yeah. To um, to um, 
to talk about dealing cards. Can you upload the example? I will upload the deal example, yes. That I had intended to do today, but I did not. Yes. Yes, that would be in the in in that. Depends which DDL examples you're speaking of. Um, there, there's the ones that are currently out on the website, which I think work in Android Studio, and then there's the older ones that I'm showing in class that that work in Eclipse. Right. The, the manifest is typically the place that you would change it. Yeah. You you could inc you could uh, you could download the the older SDK and then you probably wouldn't have to do that because that's probably the problem that you're running into is it doesn't have that SDK and therefore yeah. it, blo it blows it. Well, you know, if you want to show me, we can take a look at it. All right. All right. Oh, I'm having pizza for dinner today, so this is a great uh, timing. Go ahead. Uh, no, I was just, you, you provided code from, it was actually written in the data class. Yes. I mean, I literally copy-pasted your pizza code into the pizza class and the other stuff was Uh-huh. No, 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 those are yours. Okay, the, yeah. Know, yeah, those, you know, I, I, I would, <laughs> I wouldn't, if, if I did not want you to use them, I wouldn't have given them to you. Or I would have given, yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, that was the whole idea um, that, um, again, given that people are coming in with a little bit different backgrounds and all that, what I wanted to do is I wanted to provide an example of a couple classes that talk to each other. Yeah. So I provided those. All you have to do is hook those into the android -y stuff. Essentially, you're writing a UI right. to go on top of those. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Other questions? I should wear one of those, like, little visors, you know, like the dealers wear. Maybe I'll get one of those for next time. All right. Next time, we're dealing cards.